to be like an intimate evening, which is usually better. I think this way. Uh, the reason we, we, we were doing this, just in general, was the EDC over the last year and a half or so has been finding out through various means, especially kicked off with a meeting that we saw with Ann uh, Hunt uh, a while ago, of, of all the products and services that are available to business people that nobody seems to know about that are free. Whether it's planning, um, uh, helping with regulations, helping with insurance, getting people to help you do business plans, whatever. And it just seemed like it was all out there. And every time you'd find one of these things, you'd say, God, nobody seems to know about this stuff. So, you know, we thought we'd do a sort of series of workshops, and this being the first one and the intimate group that it is, but it's, you'll learn something, I think, tonight, um, of just what's available, and not so much all about it, but what it is, and then how you can how you can get in touch with the people who are going to do it for you, whether it's through the SBA or through SCORE or whatever. That's part of it. The other part is um, Jennifer McKenzie is the uh, uh, community branch manager for Liberty Bank here in town, and there's a lot of mystique, a lot about what you, what businesses, the right way to you know use a bank, to take advantage of a bank, actually to present to a bank, so that when you go in and you need money or you need some help. You're talking the same language as the bank wants. How do you actually go in and say, I need money for this? I have a business plan. Um, is it, you know, kind of the shopping for the products and the services they've got? So between the two of them, the goal is by the end of the evening, um, you can get an idea of, of something that's there. This, this SBA uh, resource guide is great. It's, I mean, it lists every, every agency, organization, score, all that stuff in there as a, as a lead behind. Uh, Anne has a, a PowerPoint presentation which you can get electronically from me. Um, if you want it, just let me know and I'll send you, send you whatever it is. But that guide itself, the SBA guide, uh, you realize just the, the tremendous the bounty that's in there of people that are sitting around waiting for somebody to call them up and say I need some help for free. That we're all paying for it because it's paying. <laughs> the wife's paying for it, we're all paying for it. But it's all there, so we must take advantage of it. So at first, we're gonna, I'm going to have uh, Jennifer McKenzie's going to talk. If you don't know her, she is the she's the bank manager here at, at Liberty Bank in Clinton. And uh, I think this will be like questioning what questions when they. Sure, the, I can have questions at any time. I'll just run through some stuff. I had a PowerPoint, but it had to be vetted by marketing. So yeah. <laughs> we don't want any. Right, we have to, a little stress. We want so. the class. I have a sexy a picture for you. We want a little C on some of these memos going around. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, okay. after today, they are working on one though. For everybody. And then I th and then I thought at the very end, so we'll go uh, Jennifer and then Anne and then at the end, uh, if there's any specific thing you say, you know what I really need is I really need some help with a business plan. Then maybe we can just can f focus in on that. And then we'll also like to hear back. Um, any input you got as of what an another one would be. And also, maybe if this is the beginning of some workshops, maybe you can tell some other people, you know, you really could learn something for this. Maybe the timing is wrong, maybe it should be later or something, but that's what it is, kind of set this dialogue. We'd like to do one a quarter, and this is kind of like the overview of what we'd like to get done. Right? So. so, hi everybody, I'm Jen McKenzie. I'm the branch manager at Liberty Bank in Clinton, and I've been in banking for over 12 years. I was a business banker for J.P. Morgan down in Greenwich. So I have done um, specific to business banking activities um, for businesses of all sizes and I've owned my own business. Typically what I run into when I'm out there is there are three concerns of businesses, saving time, saving money, and cash flow. And I think cash flow is really one of the main reasons um, businesses struggle or ultimately fail. Um, and just not knowledge on funds that are available like through the SBA. Um, I'm just going to start with um, banking. and I. I'm really just going to focus on new businesses. Um, we have a lot of complex uh, types of accounts and services for the larger businesses, but it seemed to me that this workshop is really geared more towards the small business. When you come in to open a bank account, we are um, regulated by the feds, and we have to ensure that you have effectively registered your business. So typically people will register with the state, um, and they can do it in different forms. It can be a corporation, it can be um, an LLC, which seems to be the most popular in Connecticut. Um, and you do that through the state website, and then you also, um, and you get what are called articles of organization or articles of incorporation, and we require those documents in order before we'll even open an account. Um, then there's your tax identification number. It can be your SOCH if you're a little business. Um, or it can be an EIN, which is issued by uh, the feds, and that is available to you free online. Very simple to get. 
sometimes when people are starting, like, like let's say somebody says, well, I'm just going to start a photography business and I'm just going to work out of my home. That's uh, typically called a DBA, a doing business as. And you can just come right down to town hall. It's like less than 10 bucks. And you say, you know what? I'm going to run this little business out of my home. And I'm going to use my social security number so I don't need to register with the feds for an EIN. And you get that DBA certificate and you can bring that to me. But you typically cannot just come in and say, oh, I'm going to go into business and open a business account. We are highly monitored um, and, and regulated. And we have to be compliant, so we do require docs. If anybody's opening a business or just starting, they can call me and we'll run through it. Typically, when you establish a relationship with a bank, um, you open up a business checking account so that you can make purchases, you know. And we will take a look at how you intend the money to come in and how you intend for the money to go out. That's your um, cash flow analysis. It takes five seconds. It's the bills you pay, your rent, your phone, etc. And we will teach you ways to do that more simply, more quickly, uh, typically using online banking. Um, I'm not a big fan of writing checks, Mike. China. As you know, um, and there's a whole other reason for that. It's, it's not as quick, it's not as efficient, and it's certainly not as safe. Every time you write a check, you're sending out your account number, your routing number, your name, your address. You too. Me? No, Jimmy. Love checks. Love Anyways, checks. Um, a lot of you guys. So, so at any rate, when you're a small business and you're just starting, every penny counts. And so banks usually will have some kind of an introductory product. Typically, the smaller banks like Liberty, I'm going to toot my own horn here, are better for that. Um, if you go to J.P. Morgan and you open up their introductory, they require a minimum balance of uh, $1,500. That's a lot of money, especially for that person that's opening the photography business. We have no minimum balance requirement. We don't have fees um, if you go down to like zero in the account. Um, I am a huge fan. Every business should open up a checking and a savings, and you really should be tucking away 25 to 50 percent of your proceeds, depending on what you can afford, into savings to pay for your taxes, because those will come and bite you in the tuchus. You think, "Yay, I'm going along and making all this money," and then the state comes in and goes, "It's time for your quarterlies." Ouch! That hurts. So we try to structure it so that we set you up the first time with the checking and the savings, and teach you to slide it. We're going to give you online banking so you can just get on your computer, move your money as you need to. We're going to issue you a debit card, all free of charge. Um, and then here's the part where I might differ from other bank managers. I really, really firmly believe in getting a business credit card. And I'm not trying to sell you a product. I've already exceeded that goal. I don't, you know, it's a, it's, I don't care about my goal. The reason for the business credit card is, is it's establishing credit in the name of the business instead of in your name. And you're also not commingling funds. You should not be using your personal account to, to do business purchases because if the IRS comes in and does an audit, it is not so, it's a nightmare. So everything should be kept uh, delineated. Your business charges go through your business account, either through your debit or your credit card, and your personal is on the other side. Some banks will allow you to have online banking where you can see your business account and your personal account. Unless you are so diligent, and I very rarely will set this up for a client. I did it for a client today because he's like psycho and I know he won't. We don't want you commingling. We don't want you transferring from your personal to your business. Again, that IRS audit, not so good. Also, your accountant who's trying to tally up the expenses that he can deduct is going to be like, ah, it's spaghetti in a windstorm. So we really want you to keep that separate. Typically, um, we have a lot of extra services banks will help you with like payroll or um, merchant processing where we can help you accept credit cards. Um, I typically tell you guys when you come in to open an account, yes, we do do that. Check our rates and check others and then check online for customer service because sometimes it does make sense to pay a little bit more. Now, I'm not saying our merchant services is more expensive, but there is a couple of companies out there that a lot of people in town use that they're happy with. So, you know, my ultimate goal is to save you guys money, not sell you another product. So I will walk you through that process. Sometimes people will say, well, I don't want to accept credit cards. It costs me 3% or 3.5%. And then I'm going to look you in the eye and I'm going to say, that's fine. I get it. But how much business are you losing by not accepting that debit card? Because a lot of people, when they pay for services or goods, want to use their debit card They're get, or their credit card. They're getting points. They don't like to carry cash. So you have to take a measurement and take a really serious look about it, at it, at the whole situation. Now, if you're doing septic servicing, you're probably going to get away without it. 
But if you have a store in town, I'm pretty sure you probably should be accepting debit and credit cards. Yeah. So we'll take a look at everything and go through it with you. And again, that's part of that cash flow cycle, money coming in, money coming out. How can we increase the money coming in, decrease the money going out, and make all of that as simple and as quick as possible? Any questions thus far? Yes. You were talking about uh, using a credit card for your business to establish credit. Correct. When you use your credit card, pay for something, do you automatically get the credit then, or do you have to go through the, to a, bill, to a billing cycle? Should you keep a certain percentage? Okay, so credit cards for? work the same on the business as they do on the personal from an establishing credit perspective. Um, you don't have to keep the limit. They're going to see you using it. Okay, so you, are you saying do you need to no, carry a balance? Minimum. Uh, will it um, use a credit card to increase your credit, but how much of a balance should you keep on the credit card before it turns against you? Isn't there okay, a, yes. And okay. Are you, should you pay it off immediately, or can you wait through a cycle? How does it post? Does okay, it so there? there's a couple of answers to that. So the first way that I'm going to tackle that question is, establishing credit and then I'm going to tackle it from a cash flow perspective. You never want to run any credit card above 50% of your credit limit ever over time. That's when you start to decrease your credit score. Before it's posted or No. Ever? Oh, after. After. You can run it up to 10,000 if you pay it that month. That's before, fine. Before it's yes, posted. yes. Okay, but I'm talking about carrying balances over time. You never want to carry more than 50% of your credit line. As long as you're under that, you're building credit. It can be a dangerous thing, having a credit card for many, many people and many, many grown-ups. So it's not a kid thing either. Out of sight, out of mind. You know, let's get it. Oh, you know, let me get that extra snow blower or whatever it is. So I, I try to tell people as much as, as much as you can, try to pay everything off every month, but you're still establishing credit. And when it is in the name of the business, it's getting reported to the name of the business, so the business itself is establishing credit. So that when we go to do loans, we're going to check your personal, and then we're going to check the business, and we want to see that the business has credit. So that's why, unless somebody's had a bad, a poor credit history, immediately upon opening the account, that's part of the package, me, myself and my staff tell them, you need to try to get this. The other reason I prefer using a credit card is fraud. Because if you're, somebody gets a hold of your credit card and runs it up, there's no money coming out of your pocket. But if they get a hold of your debit card and they drain your account, you have to wait until we do our investigation to get those funds put back. And it's not as quick on the business side as it is on the personal. So, so put the credit cards in the business name and personal is personal. Yes, keep everything separate. And I always prefer to use a credit card because of the security, right? If you get hacked, it doesn't matter. You're establishing credit, but also you get points. You're getting paid to shop. Just drilling deeper on this topic, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so obviously the bank looks at your credit score on the personal side. Right. But it also is going to put me if you're starting up a small business. And That's all they got. Personal guarantee, right? So, but they're also going to look at the Equifax business credit report? Yes. And, and so there's one. And I, how, that, how those operate and what, what are they, you know, uh, how, how, does it, how are they different from a credit report that's personal? So it's just reported in the business name and I don't have the details and I am certainly not an expert on it. I think it's one credit bureau that does it. Do you know the answer to that? It's Down in Bradstreet. Down in Bradstreet. Yeah. Equifax does it. Equifax. No, it's one of the three. It's one of the three, and I think it is yeah, Equifax. Or it's, it's, it's not it's Experian. Easy. It might be TransUnion, but it's not Experian. Dun and Bradstreet track your um, They do too, but card. also one of the credit bureaus is now. The criteria that they use is that, oh, I know over time that, if you have a credit card, say you have a um, credit limit of $10,000, Dun and Bradstreet goes 30%. If you use that over 30%, that is when you're carrying balance over 30%, that's when you start to decrease your credit score with Dun and Bradstreet. 30? 30%. 30 okay. All right, so, he's so if you have a balance of he says over. Yeah, so it's like if you have a balance of four thousand dollars, they're saying you're carrying a higher credit limit. You got to get it under that thirty percent, and when you get it under that thirty percent, then it tracks you. You start growing more from right. your credit score. Will so if your higher. credit limit is ten grand, right. you don't want to run over thirty-two hundred. Right, you don't want to run over thirty-two hundred. Then when time. you get when you get it under thirty-two hundred and you want to pay a little at a time, it's fine. You, you're, you're gaining more 
credit because it's under the 30% and you're paying on time every month. But so I was told before it cycles through to the bit, actual invoice? No, when you're 30 days, you, the next statement you get, then you pay it down. Okay, oh. so you use your credit card, you can use it, but until it goes through the billing cycle, that's when it pulls to the credit bureau. That's what I'm answering. So that's your question. Yeah, can you can you keep a high balance? But you know, but, but if you pay it off tomorrow, every month, you're fine. It's, 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 so it's, so it's, here's it's, the deal, though. When we when we pull your credit for a loan, we're taking a snapshot in time, and this has happened because somebody might have a fifty thousand dollar credit card. I've seen it, and they've racked up twenty, and we took that snapshot, and it looks like they're outstanding. But then we tell the underwriter, no, he pays it off every month. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you're paying it off every month, you're fine. Is that what you're worried about? Or you want to so establish credit quickly? So you want to know. Credit, oh, so it sounds like you should have multiple credit cards. So you know your credit, you, say they give you $5,000 on that credit card for your business. Right. You don't want to show that you have a high minimum balance. But if you had multiple credit cards, you can keep the balance as well. If you're using credit cards to help your cash flow, well, but I, it, sound, it sounds like what you're saying is that he has a high credit limit, but he's running a lot of money through there, but he's paying the whole balance off in full. Right. And he wants to understand how does that impact his credit score. Well, if you're paying it off in full each time, you don't. But if I, you're want, going, I, I buy I don't everything know how on the is. internet, and if I I can have zero, but then tomorrow it could be maxed out. Right. But you pay it every you month. You pay it off. Okay, so then I don't have to worry about going through that cycle. As long right. as I no. pay it off, I could just keep one credit card. Yes, and I don't recommend more than one. Okay, that's what For I For multiple to reasons. As long as you know your, the, the timing of your payment is done when it's supposed to be paid, the credit bureau is going to take a picture of what the end of right. cycle is. And they're mon they know what you're doing. They're watching what you're doing. So they know you're not, you have the card, you're using it, you know what I mean? You're establishing credit, even That's if you right. pay it off so monthly. So as long as you... Just like a person. As long as you pay it before it posts at the end before of the Before the due date, day. yes. You're in good shape. And so here's it. the deal, too. Um, if you're late, so you're 30 days after your due date, that is really bad. You at least make that minimum payment, right? And you also get a late fee. Some people use credit cards to help with their cash flow. So they've just started out, they don't have a lot of money, and they need it. And that's okay, but we have two types of credit cards that we'll give you. We'll give you a 0% for 12 months, and those are for my people that I, that I, that I give that, that are going to have tight cash flow. And if you, they may want to carry a balance. So if you're intending to carry a balance, that's the card for you. If you think you're going to pay it off every month, get the one with the points and the rewards. Because after a year, you're going to call in and you're going to say, give me my cash and just apply it to my payment. You see what I mean? So there's, you don't get points if you have a 0%. It's one or the other. That isn't my favorite way to handle cash flow, but it can help um, for startups in, in the event that they're not qualifying for a loan. Or it can help um, if somebody's overextended and they can transfer balances over. So have I confused everybody enough? <laughs> so the next thing, uh, and then I'll be done pretty soon. Um, the next thing that you want to go to is um, lending. So we do three types, major types of loans. One is a term loan. And a term loan is a loan where you're going out to buy something big and pay it back. So it works more like a mortgage. It's a fixed rate over time. We, you know, calculate it out, and every each month you're paying principal and interest on it, and you're paying it down, paying it down, and your principal balance, and then until you pay it off, and then you own that piece of equipment. Okay, we hold that equipment as collateral. It can be refrigerators for a liquor store. It can be uh, a new lawnmower for a landscaping company. It can be fixtures for a jewelry store. But whatever it is you're using, we're we're taking that as collateral, and you're paying off a chunk of it each month, principal and interest. It's usually a fixed payment, and we require automatic payments coming out of your checking. Okay, that's a term loan. Typically, they run for about five years. Usually, amortized loan five years. The ne the next type of loan is a business line of credit, and a line of credit works much like a credit card, except it's a much lower rate because we hold all of the business assets as collateral, plus you personally guarantee, and you also personally guarantee the term loan. The days of not personally guaranteeing as a business owner are gone so. So just expect it. And a lot of my older clients are like, dude, I'm not personally guaranteeing. I'm like, well, you're not getting a loan anywhere, because you have to. 
Um, the bank's perspective on that personal guarantee is if you don't have any sweat in the game, why should we? So we, we do require that. A, a line of credit is really great for a lot of businesses around here because there's a lot of seasonality. So they might have a ton of cash coming in in the summer and then in the winter it dries up. Um, a landscaping company, for example, cranking it out, has tons of money, you know, and then they try to bank it because not much going on. They may not have a lot of snow, so they're not picking up some extra money from plowing, right? And then, boom, March rolls around and they got to order a ton of mulch, right? So they can service their clients and they don't have the cash flow to do it. So that's a good example of seasonality for a business line of credit. Uh, restaurants. Um, I have a restaurant in town um, and he has a lot of startup in, in April before he opens for the summer and so he draws down on that line and I swear to you by mid-May it's gone. They paid it all back down. So a line of credit works like this. If you get a $25,000 line which is typically you know on the smaller end for a startup and you draw down 10 on it, and it's not for big purchases like the term loan, it's for little things like cash flow shortages, payroll, um, inventory, things like that. You draw down and you pay back. Let's say my restaurant that needed it in um, April drew down 30 grand because he had to buy a ton of um, inventory, you know, food, and he had to buy some new tables and blah, blah and he isn't really bringing in money for you know, a month or two, that's fine, he only has to pay back the interest. So those payments are really low, so on you know, 20 grand he may pay 40 bucks a month. And then the flow starts coming in, it's summertime, it's Clinton, he's rocking and rolling, then he pays it back. When he pays it back, that money then becomes reavailable to him to draw back down. So it's like an up and down. Like a home equity line of credit, kind of. Those are variable rates. They're usually prime plus. They're not as low a rate as a home equity line because the collateral on those is just your business assets. It's not like a house. A house is a better collateral. Do you see what I mean? If you default, we're going to have a lot less problem liquidating your house than we are, you know, the, the fixtures in your business. So it typically runs between 4.5 and 5.5. If you're personally responsible, does that mean that your house is? So they're going to come after you, and sometimes banks will, some banks even offer a loan where they use the house as collateral. Um, we have a .002 default rate at Liberty, and I haven't been privy to calls on loans. Um, one time at TD Bank we did call on an attorney. Um, I know, nightmare. Well, that's a whole other story. But, um, no, I can tell you a lot. Because I'm an attorney. A lot of banking <laughs> stories that would curl your toes. Um, at any rate, I, th I think they can eventually. It's a very lengthy yes, process, they and they can take. Yeah. I'm an attorney, and I do I do debt collection. Work. Do you? Yeah. So I, I've seen books. books I mean, you're personally guaranteeing, so your assets. Right. So the bank would sue you. The bank would but you're going to file you. chapter whatever before that happens, right. and you're not, and then your house and your cars are protected, right? right. So can't take away your livelihood. So, I mean, it's a time kind of rhetorical question because yes, technically, but depending on the situation, probably not. Yeah. And Mike knows about liquidating a little bit. <laughs> so then the other kind of loan we do is a commercial real estate loan. They're called CREMS, Commercial Real Estate Mortgage. Um, and I think people have a little bit of a disillusion about those. We are not going to give you a commercial real estate loan if you don't op uh, occupy 51% of the property. So I think a lot of people go out and they're like, oh, let me buy this property and I'll rent out you know, two thirds of it and just take this third and I'm gonna make all this money. Mm -mm, not so much. We're not down for that. Um, we, and, uh, most banks won't. I know JP Morgan won't, TD won't, so, and I don't know, maybe there's some out there that do. Those are pretty high risk loans. I think if you think about it from the bank's perspective, we might be more inclined to do that on the personal, but the, the thing is, if you're going to default on something, you're not going to default on your house, right? You don't want to lose your house. It's the last thing you're going to lose, but you may walk away from commercial real estate. And there's been a lot of fluctuations in that market, a lot of bubbles, and um, it's, it's been a tough market. So we're very careful about where we lend. Most banks do require that 51%, and then we usually require a little bit more down, like 30% or so. 
So if you're coming in and you're opening a new business, I, I, had a, I have a great case. There's a guy in town, he does, um, I, 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 I gotta be careful what I say. He's a service business, he's killing it. He's doing so well and he's been in business for two years. And so he was submitting his loan and he's trying to enter everything into QuickBooks, right? And he's doing a really good, I mean the guy's pulling in like 600 and his cost of goods sold is like 235. So he's sexy candidate for a loan. And he's growing so rapidly that he needs some money to hire staff, okay? And the kind of business that he's in, he does a lot of government work and those guys are really slow to pay, okay? So his accounts receivable is, is this long, but I'm like, okay, go into QuickBooks and print your balance sheet and your profit and loss statement for this year, and then we'll just take the tax returns from the prior years. Now, he's been in business over two years, so he's made, we may be coming down the pike to you, but we might not have to. No offense, but first thing. So at any rate, we went and looked, and his, everything was skewed. He hadn't entered his numbers right. So we did a manual P&L and a manual balance sheet. And I'm telling you right now, you guys know everything you own up here. You know what you owe. But a lot of times when it's we try to put it on paper, you're like, blah. So I'll hand out like an application and say, I need a PL and a balance sheet and I need a personal finance. And they're like, Ugh. but once I sit down with them and I'm like, okay, how much equipment do you have? And rather like, give me a list off your equipment. They know. And what's the value of it? And they know that too. So you can fill it out manually, and I'm telling you, 99.9% .9 of the time it's in their head. So the last four loans I've done, I've had to do manual profit and loss and manual balance sheets, and it's been no problem. As soon as I sit down with them quietly and we just go through it, it's like, oh. And it's really cool because once you fill out that balance sheet, you can actually see what your, the, the business is worth. So it seems very complex to get a loan and it's not it really isn't it's and a lot of it is up here it's just a matter of getting the right person to speak to you in normal language and not financial language and get it on paper and submit it and I've had a lot go through that way they don't need fancy schmancy sexy spreadsheets they just need the numbers in reality and as long as you're honest we're good Jennifer what, what others can kind of document they need for a small business loan so for a small, it's not our business uh, kind of and this stuff, I'm like if they want to know a small business, they want to uh, you know mm, do for equipment like uh, mm, uh, you know uh, mm, get some uh, mm, larger business uh, or open a new business. What can a document the bank they need? For okay, so first of all, an equipment loan is easier to get than a line. So we love that because the collateral is the equipment that we're purchasing. So that's the first thing. We are going to require the purchase and sale agreement so we can actually see that you're purchasing the equipment. Okay, that's the first thing. And then we're going to require that you put some of the money in towards it. You've got to have a little sweat in there. So if you're buying a $90,000 piece of equipment, we're probably going to ask you to put, you know, 20, 30 in there, depending. Um, then we're going to ask you for your tax returns for the last three years. Now, if you're a brand new business, you won't have tax returns for the business. So we're going to ask you to give us a business plan which is something that we talked about and you'll go into more detail. And in that business plan, you're gonna show us how you intend to make money through the business. And again, it's just like the P&L and the balance sheet, it sounds horrific, it's not. If you've thought of it, you've thought a lot more through than you think. So we'll do that, we'll take your personal tax returns, okay, um, past three years, and then we ask for a personal financial statement. And that's where we get into the nitty gritty. Do you own stocks? Do you have a 401k? What kind of assets do you have? Because you're personally guaranteeing that loan, and we want to make sure we're going to get our money back. We don't like the risk. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to go into a little more detail on the business plan? I mean, or do you want to? I think we're good with that. Okay. That's good. Um, so that's basically what we're looking for. So if it's been in business um, for any amount of time, we want the profit and loss and the balance sheet, which I can help, and then the three years tax returns and the personal financial statement, and of course the application. Also, another question: Does the bank they help them to fill out the application with the, uh, with the small I sit with every single one of my business clients and fills it out with them. I fill okay. it out with them because sometimes it's like, what? You know what I mean? I'm not sure what they mean, so it's a lot easier. It takes me 20 minutes. That's good. Yeah. And just the thanks, Liberty Bank. I dealt with a lot of banks opening all my businesses. And Liberty Bank is very good at what they do. Other banks I've tried, they want red tape and uh, give you, take a week, two weeks. They gave me an answer in 
less than 72 hours. Yeah, we do. Once we get They're the very full good, application. Very good and very fast. If we get them all the docs, the turnaround time on a business loan is... Yeah. You, get, you find you out right away. And, and order, if you get declined, like I had a guy declined the other day, and I called the head of business lending, which I can pick up the phone and call, I know him, which is nice because it wasn't that way at Chase. And he's like, this is what the guy needs to do. We need to get his credit score to this. And so in six months, we'll reapply. And so now we can monitor his credit score and come back. Jennifer, are you going to be around? Are you, are you got a conflict? Are you going to be around at the end? I'm going home with Ms. Spazzato, so she is oh, the director of anyway, all so, things. I mean, at the end, <laughs> I mean, specific questions with either with Ann or Jennifer, I think it'd be good. I think specific, you want to deal with them. Can you leave your car? I think. Yes. Jim, Jimmy? I, I think I would advise people to, uh, personal experience, to use the credit card in their business for sales. You know, I always thought the 3% was killing me. I didn't realize that I was getting the money in my account within 24 hours. Right. And when you're starting up a business, that's really Cash critical. flow. That's a very good point. You get your money faster. Right. And so a lot of people don't think of that. They think, oh, these are tight. I'm not, I don't want to give up the 3%. But if you can get that money within 24 hours, it's a lot better than waiting 30 yeah. days to make a bill up. Yeah. The other thing was the taxes on the startup business. That's usually what kills small businesses. And if you could put, have like a savings account, or your taxes, and you can calculate it. Put it in there when it's time to ship it off. You're not going to have any liens against you by the state or by the federal. That's the biggest nightmare. It's cash flow and taxes. Mm -hmm. And and we we really like every single girl. If you come into my, all my girls will tell you you got to open up a savings. And you know, and quite honestly, the bank doesn't really make much money, and the interest rates are terrible. It's not about that. It is really just about structuring yourself so that you will succeed. And I'll grab my business cards, and then I'll let you go, because I don't have to talk to them. One okay. question. I haven't checked my credit in a long time. Okay. What is the best way to check your credit without checking your credit? So, a couple things on that. Um, every year, you get a free credit report from all three bureaus mandated by the feds. Okay. Annualcreditreport.com is what the Department of Commerce or the whatever it is says that that's what they recommend. They won't typically give you the score, though. Now. I'm just going to tell you this, when you go to pull those credit reports, it's three credit bureaus and you're young, but there's going to be a lot of data there. So there's a couple of things I'm going to ask you to think about before you start on this quest. The first thing is you need to be sitting quietly where there are no children poking at you and no dogs yapping at you. They're going to ask you questions like, what car did you own in 1972? Was it a VW Rabbit or, you know what I mean? So memory recall, is because they got to make sure it's you. And you don't want them giving your information. The next thing is the reports are can be 50 pages. Personally, I can't look at a screen. I have to print. I'm sorry. I know environmentally that's really irresponsible. So have a laser printer handy is my second thing. Then you can pull it, and if there's anything erroneous, you can write a letter. Now, getting your score, there's different ways, and I can't promote any way. You know, there's the credit karma. They will allow you to pay extra at the end to get your score that way, too. A lot of credit cards that you might have may also monitor your score for free. Discover if, is the first if you thing. have a LifeLock, you get all three automatically every month. Mm -hmm. That's ten bucks. And let's so you, you, you have to pay for the life. Lock, you pay for the LifeLock well, because you pay for it's, security. It's, it's, but I took out a loan recently, but the bank couldn't share the credit score with me. Really? They're supposed they to show you. you. Know, was it, it was it a personal loan? It was a commercial loan. Uh, yeah, we get we, we can get in a lot of trouble. There's so much we yeah. won't. I think I agree with this. So it could have been on the You'll agree with this. One of the things is don't Google annual credit report. Type in and if you Google annual credit report, you'll get Credit oh, Karma yeah. and you know, yeah, and the people that charge you. It should be free. Life bonds for yeah. services okay. for hundred dollars. So, so what is the best one to do? So if you check your one, yes. www.annualcreditreport.com. All right. So we're going to we're going to move on to the second part of this. And if, after it's over, anything specific you want to deal with Jennifer to talk right now with Ann Hunt. She's the uh, director of the SBA for the state of Connecticut. We also play a new newcomer here from Boston. So uh, she came to a better state. <laughs> <laughs> higher ta I've lived in most states, and this is higher taxes than that. The tax of Massachusetts is. Massachusetts. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, on page 28 of this resource guide, my gift to all of you, it tells you what to bring to a bank to answer your question right there. Do you have that? In this resource guide? So that'll answer your question about what a lender requires.
Has anyone ever heard of the SBA or used our services? I used them. With, how'd you use us? I, I, um, my mortgage on my business. Oh, cool. 20, 20 year mortgage. Okay, you got a 504 loan? 504 loan, right. Okay, okay. awesome. My, okay. Down. okay, cool. cool. Not paying well anyone else? You can too? Okay. I've used it a couple of times. Okay, awesome. Through a loan? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, SBA, they say we stand for three C's and a D, Contracting, Counseling, Capital, and Disaster Assistance. Um, we just came off of our fiscal year, which ended September 30, and we had a record-setting year. Nationally, we helped um, 70,000 businesses get $28 billion in SBA loans, and through our loan programs, um, we helped create or retain 694,000 jobs. On the second bullet here, um, contracting, I know um, that was stated today, the government is required to set aside 23% of its purchase to small businesses. And the government is the largest purchaser of goods and service in the entire world. So that's a good way to expand your market. We can help you sell to the government. It pretty much buys everything you can imagine. Everything in this room, um, they are looking to procure. So we can help you with that. Um, through counseling too, we, um, through our counseling services, advised 1.4 million businesses this year. So in Connecticut, we had a great year. You can see um, our lending was up on our programs. Um, overall, it was up by about 8%. So through our guarantee program, we don't have one penny to lend out ourselves. We work with banks such as Liberty Bank. They're the people that actually will lend the loan to you, and we provide a guarantee to the bank. You still work with the lender. It's the lender that then comes to SBA and asks us to provide a guarantee for them. Um, we counseled over 30,000 businesses here in Connecticut. And through um, our lending activity just in Connecticut, we helped create or retain 6,500 jobs in Connecticut. So I'm very proud of that. Um, again, as I said, overall lending up 8% over the last year, and our lending to women, veterans, and minor minorities also increased. So here's that contracting, 23% goes to small businesses. And that totals $90.7 billion. So wouldn't you like to get a little piece of that action? And in Connecticut, this is how um, the federal government procurements broke down. $544 million went to small businesses right here in Connecticut. So counseling, we provide um, free counseling. And um, it's in person. We can help you through um, these resources. We're going to talk about SCORE, Small Business Development Centers, the Women Business um, Centers. They provide free confidential counseling to you. Um, definitely something to take advantage of. SCORE, these are retired people that have been successful in their own right and they want to give back to the community, give back to small businesses. The best thing about SCORE is that um, if you want to open up, say, a restaurant, you can meet with a counselor who had their own restaurant. So you can't um, get that anywhere else, that very specialized counseling, someone that's been there, done that. That is a fantastic program that they have. They also put on some pre-business workshops. Is everyone in business here? Is anyone a tire kicker looking to start their business? OK. Sometimes the best thing they can do is dissuade someone from going into business. Right? It sounds glamorous to own your own business. But maybe someone has no background in the business that they want to get into. They have no money. Um, that was stated you need some skin in the game. They don't have it. They have poor credit. Sometimes SCORE helps them understand what's really involved with running their business. And here's the locations. Um, probably the closest down here is out of our southeastern Connecticut SCORE chapter, Old Saybrook. All of the different locations um, are in this book as well. Then we have um, what's called the Small Business Development Centers. These are financed by the Small Business Administration in the state of Connecticut. And basically, um, where SCORE is a volunteer organization, Small Business Development Centers are actually paid counselors. So 
someone will say, well, when should I go to school? When should I go to the small business administ uh, the small business development center or the women business centers? I say go to all three. You might connect with the person. You might get something from them. Go to someone else, get something from them. But we're the um, small business development center personnel or paid contractors um, and employees. They can help you really put your business plan together. So they're not going to do it for you. They're going to give you homework. You're going to understand your financials. You're going to get as prepared as possible before you go to Liberty Bank to get that loan. They're going to make sure that if you're projecting your business operations, that those projections look reasonable and attainable based upon the specific business that you're in. The cost of goods sold looks like it compares with others in your industry. The net profit margin is something that that industry could achieve. They're going to make you as bankable and ready to answer the tough questions that that lender is going to ask you. They want to make sure that you, in fact, understand your business and, more importantly, understand your financial statement. And then this Women Business Center is located throughout the state. Um, they don't um, not accept men, but they are really, um, their mission is really to help women entrepreneurship. So capital, um, as I said, we don't have one penny to lend ourselves. It is all through our lending partners. So we have two programs, 7A. That is where we will provide um, a guarantee to the bank for them to extend financing that would not otherwise be available. And we'll talk about the times that they come to us. So that can um, finance most every legitimate business purpose. If you want to buy a business, if you want to do refinancing, if you want to buy a piece of equipment, if you need some working capital, that can be financed with a 7A program. The 504 program that you got, sir, is strictly for um, real estate usually or some very, very heavy types of equipment. In um, our real estate, too, you, the business has to occupy 51% of the um, facility in order to get financed. Here's some success stories, right? Everyone starts small, but these businesses actually, along their way, got help from the Small Business Administration. I want to see your names up here next year, okay, so we can tell your success. So, um, I think this was talked about earlier, um, but what does a bank look for when they're thinking about granting you the money, good character that you have, that good credit score? that you have experience and commitment into your business, that you have some skin in the game, you heard that a lot today, that you have that feasible business plan, that you have collateral, and that repayment on the loan looks reasonable. So basically, as I said, we don't lend money of our own. What you do, you go to Liberty Bank, you make that application for the loan, they look at the request and they say, geez, I really think that you can pay me back, um, but there's something that doesn't fit all of their credit check offs, right? Say you don't have the collateral that they need or want to see from your business. It would not be adequate for them if your business were to shut their doors. You're not able to offer up, say you're a service business, you don't have that collateral that would protect them 100% if they had to liquidate the assets. That's where SBA would come into play. We would not decline a loan solely on the basis of inadequate collateral. If everything else looks good, you're experienced, you have some good money in your business, repayment looks reasonably assured, you're putting up what you have, but you just don't have all of that collateral to protect you. That's probably the biggest reasons why the bank would come to us and um, ask us to guarantee that loan. Um, new businesses, very, very um, difficult. When you guys all started your business, um, what happens a lot of times is maybe you open a credit card and you start your business on a credit card, right? And you're showing that you're able to generate sales and you're generating profit and you're stuck with these very high interest rate credit cards. You can um, come to the bank and we can maybe restructure that credit card debt and put that into a term loan because the interest rates on credit cards is very high and you're never really going to be chipping away at that principal. But if you were able to refinance only the business purposes that you put on your credit card, it could be maybe financed with an SBA guaranteed loan. 
Some types of businesses um, have a higher default rate than others. We'll go back to that restaurant. Um, that has a very high failure rate, that type of industry, but maybe you're a very good restaurateur. The bank will take a risk on you, again, if SBA were to provide that guarantee to you. And um, the biggest benefit probably is with an SBA guarantee, you can get a loan written for a lot longer. You heard for an equipment loan, you'd get five years, right? With SBA, they can write that loan for 10 years or even match the useful life of that piece of equipment. Say you're buying a piece of equipment that has a useful life of 15 years, with SBA's guarantee, they could write that loan for that much longer. And what that does is really reduces your monthly payment to something that your business could afford. So again, conventionally five years, but with SBA, they can go a lot longer. Or the bank might be at their legal or policy limit to you. So this just goes, in, and I talked about this, how this all works, it's really going to the bank. Um, we have micro loans, so if you're not able to um, get a loan from a bank and you need the smaller dollar loans under $50,000, we have um, these micro lenders that are listed here also in the book. They can push the credit envelope a little bit more, like someone that doesn't have the best of credit. They're really more mission focused and try to help out businesses that need those very, very small loans to um, help their business. And um, another program that is fairly new is called Link. Has anyone ever heard of Match.com? Yes, okay. This is our Match.com. What you're gonna do is go into um, the SBA website and key in some information about your business the type of business that you have, how long have you been in business, how much of a loan do you need. You key this information into the computer, and then banks have signed up to um, look at types of deals. They structure, I want to only um, look at businesses in a certain county of Connecticut, P businesses that need $100,000 that have been in business two or more years. They can set up the parameters of the type of request that they want to look at, but basically, it allows you to get your um, needs in front of a lot more banks, and then it also allows banks to um, attain more customers. Okay, so if you're not able to get success with your local lender that you work with, that's always an option for you to go through as well. So step one, you answer a few questions about your business. Um, the bank has two days to um, say they want to speak to you or not. And then uh, step three is you're going to receive information about these res um, counseling resources that we talked about earlier. And I just want to talk about disaster assistance. Was anyone affected by Hurricane Sandy? All of you? Okay. We have till December 1st. It's still open to oh get God, money. It's still open? Yes. Yes. So if you had a business that um, your sales really went down yourself or the um, area that your business is located really didn't come back, December 1st. So take a look at um, our disaster program on sba.gov and see if you feel as though um, you want to make application. Again, they opened it back up. December 1st is the final deadline for Sandy Finance. And these are the counties that um, have the uh, disaster assistance. And then we're um, on the internet, sba.gov forward slash ct. Um, if you want to visit that site, it talks about all the great things that we can do to help your business. We have an event calendar. You can see what kind of training is coming up and um, avail yourself of that. We do a lot of webinars, so you don't even have to leave your business, but you can partake of um, different trainings right through your um, computer at your business or your home. Contact information um, of our staff. And again, go to sba.gov and sign up for our newsletters. And you, um, we have a lot of information that we put out um, throughout the year. Definitely get on our um, distribution list to be really up to date with what we have to offer you. And that's it. So this resource guide, again, um, invaluable. Some night reading 
when you can't sleep, just open this book. Um, <laughs> there are so many programs that are available to small businesses, as John said, that people have no idea that it's available. So again, if you want to um, expand your market to exporting, um, I think it's 96% of customers are outside the United States in the world. So you can sell your goods and service to um, someone outside of the United States. We can hold your hand to do that too. It sounds a little frightening, but with the internet today, you might be getting orders from people overseas anyways. We can help you um, expand your um, sales into the foreign markets, and again, the contracting, we can um, hopefully expand, help you expand your sales too, so. Thank you. We want to answer any questions, any questions for either of us? Want anything to over? I know there's a lot of information came out there, but. Yes, sir. Tom? I go to your SBA counselor in Westbrook oh, cool. once a month, oh. and there's anything you can think of that hope is there. Just what you're talking about, exporting, cool. yes. social awesome. media. Uh, and I've been working with them for about a year now. Great. Tightening up on my PL report. Great. Um, so people don't just don't realize that, that right. it's out there. Great, right? And yes. uh, then I go to a weekly uh, private pay counselor working on my uh, uh, everything to do with uh, running my business. And over the last year or so, we went through every line item of the business. And you had a, you had a document up there where they, they can go out and get a profile of your business, all the different figures of what you're spending on insurance, mortgage. <coughs> right, industry averages? Like, yeah, what well, does your business? You can, go, you can go and take your business and look at all of your neighbors yep. and see what they're paying, what percentage they're paying for everything. So you go back and you find like each line and you think you know everything about business, but when you start to deal with a professional, you can you can keep turning it and turning it and uh, save a lot of money. Did you say you were paying for that second service? I am I want to go on weekly. You paying for that? I'm paying for that, but I go to this one, it's free, it's once okay. a month. Because the small business development centers have these unbelievable programs that can help you with your business, right? How you match up against your competition. That's all free. And um, you can see where they're located, the closest location down here. I would suggest maybe just connect it with a small business development center too. Yeah, there was four, the same. The there was the S, uh, SBA and UConn. Right, that's SBDC. Okay, I thought you said you were talking to SCORE. No, not SCORE, uh, SBA. SBA has SBDC. A, they have a joint venture with UConn. Yes. Right there, there once a month. SBDC, cool. Make yeah. point, they sit down. But they have and, unbelievable programs that can help you. They, have, they have unlimited programs. Right. If you want to buy a you know, start a startup, you want to bring a product in, you right. want to name it, you want to sell it, you want to stock it. And they'll show you exactly what's going to happen six months from now. Yeah, the what ifs. And you yeah, think absolutely. you know what you're doing, right. but you know if, the, if, if your neighbors tried it, it failed. Well, this is the way we should do it. So it, it's very. Uh, I just came down here just like I go to that, just to absorb more information. And but people don't realize what's out there. They have no, no. idea. And, and that's why John put this together. Absolutely, that is so true. I mean. When I go and talk to people that have been in business for like 20 years, they never heard of the Small Business Administration. Like, oh, I wish I had known about you when I started my business. So at least you're getting in on this a little bit earlier than that. Well, there's all, there's all kinds of programs. If you hire a veteran, uh, Express Job Program with the uh, yeah. Economic Development in Hartford. Correct, DECD, uh, correct. The, uh, Middlesex Chamber has a loan program. There's, there's a lot of different. Uh, there's these businesses right in our neighborhood right here that have uh, obtained very good packages through these uh, government programs. Great. Great. I think I think also just so, something I said earlier, because there, this is a nice small intimate group, but this, there is a lot of amazing stuff that exists there, and maybe not for your competition, but if we do a little viral, viral socialization 
of this. I mean, you can take more of these, leave behind them, more of the books, like there's extra resource books, take some. Share with all your neighbors. Yeah, just you know, give them these, you'll get a book through it. The, uh, I'll give you my business card and you can just email me and I'll send you the, I'll send you Anne's uh, PowerPoint too, because it kind of takes you through the, kind of that helicopter level of what she's doing. But it's, there's a lot of stuff in there and I think the more people that are in the chamber or just in town <clears throat> looking through this stuff, it's, it's, it's there. Yes. And somebody's using it. There might as well be people that, you know. I wonder if they could yeah. hand that out at the town clerk. Yeah. That's my, that's what I want to do, to go to the 169 cities. Town clerks are the first people. You heard about registering your business, right? right? I want them to give this to everyone I'll, registering their business. I'll make sure that everybody, I'll make sure all you. the ones I have, I'll drop off Thank there. you, thank and you, thank have, you. Our town clerks are okay. I'll thank take you. a few in all the yeah. banks thank and you. have them too. Absolutely. I can have a staff. Absolutely. We'll it's, get it's them. a great one. Yeah. You know? We are the first stop usually, then we send them to the town clerk yep. actually. Okay, cool. <laughs> Come back when you're done. <laughs> I will do that, I'll drop them off. The last the one is a question, it's actually a question. But yes, but, sir. Uh, for the sign up for the, uh, the process application, you guys uh, also have them like uh, Liberty Bank? You have all the, the well, application So here's yeah, the we, we, for the SBA. Yeah. So you come to me, I put it into my underwriter. My underwriter says, ah, not so much, but if we go SBA, then you're going to come back to me and we're going to re we're going to fill out the SBA together. We try to bring more business for you guys from the town. What's the, there's a, usually a buy-in fee that we do. There the is. There's a cost. Oh, oh yeah, thank we, you. That was we my have, question. We're having a sale. <laughs> sale. Any loan of $150,000 or less, there's no guarantee fee. And that's no, going, no that's application fee? No, no guarantee that, fee. That doesn't end December 1? It keeps going? Um, we've had it for about three or four years. It just got um, approved for our fiscal year, which we begin October 1st. So from now until 9 30 17. And then um, for any veterans in the group, any veterans? Um, they can get up to $350,000 express no fee in half of what someone would normally pay up to five hundred. dollars Thank you, because we are having that sale continue. Yes. I do. My cards are up here if anyone wants to charge. Thank you very much, Kat. Yeah. You guys did a good job. So thank, thank you, you to the organizers for allowing yeah. us the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Feel free to have some uh, cookies and a salad and anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, John. I hate a Subway cookie. I can't stop it. Every time I walk in, have a cookie. <laughs> just, 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 you know, to state the obvious, the Economic Development Commission is here to support you guys and ladies, as, as the Chamber is, although we're saying goodbye to our August. Chamber of Commerce. So I mean, we exist. I mean, this EDC EDC exists. It's been kind of like under the something for a while, but you know, the more you let us know about what you guys need, ladies, too. Just you know, just you got my email now. Just you know, here's what we like. To, we want to do another one of these next first quarter of the year kind of thing. It probably won't be as over. Maybe it is just business plan development or something. Maybe we get somebody from SCORE to come in. I've used SCORE when I was down there in Norwalk, the Norwalk SCORE. I mean, they're, they're wonderful guys. And they really seem to like doing what they do, do for some reason. Marketing, employment. Marketing, employment, inventory, state regulations, regulation growth, a lot of stuff. So, you know, if you start, just send ideas. And, as I said, pass it around to other people that are business guys in town that don't, weren't here tonight. Um, it would help. It would help everybody. It would help us because we know what we're supposed to be doing to help you. and. Hopefully it would help you make some more money and grow the town, you know. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.